Hi all, welcome back to Force Galaxy. Hope you are doing good. So today in this video, I will going to discuss the questions which were shared by you over the comment section. And from uh, past many days, I have not uh, revert on any of the questions. So I would like to discuss here on this video. So if you have any other questions related to this or any more, so you can share same on the comment section and we'll try to revert you as soon as possible. Okay. So now let's start with the video and so here is our very first question. So the question is what is the difference between freeze and deactivate? Okay. So as we all know in our Salesforce there is no option to delete a user. So now what if I want to use the license of this user and want to give to another user. So in this case what we can do is we have uh, we cannot delete a user from the Salesforce. Okay, uh, either we can go with the freezing of user or we can go deactivation of user. Okay, so terms are different. So what happened when we uh, uh, use this keyword freezing, then this means we are only stopping a user from being logged in. So the license is not going to free. We are not going to free up the license here. So the user will going to have this license and we cannot use this license for any other user if we are freezing the user. Okay. And in future, this user may can come back. So we are temporarily suspending the account, this user account. But when we talk about the deactivation, then this, this means we are uh, going to free up the license and this license now can be used for the another user also. Okay. And in this, we are completely going to suspend the or we are completely going to stop the login of this user. And in future, this user will not going to come back. Okay. So these are the two ways or the two. Uh, so these are the two ways we have in our Salesforce uh, through which we can manage a user and free up the license. So the next question is why we cannot call future method from any batch class. So what is the reason behind this? Okay. As we all know, we cannot call a future method from the future method and we can cannot also call a future method from the batch apex. If we try to call, then we will going to get an exception. Uh, that is the future methods are not allowed to call from the future or from the batch apex. So the reason behind this is that both are the asynchronous calls and Salesforce does not allow to call a asynchronous method from the current asynchronous method. Now the next question here will going to come in your mind. We are able to call a batch apex from the batch apex and both are the asynchronous here. So why, how this is possible? So the here is also the reason. So the reason behind this is that we are going to call second batch in the finish method. So finish method will going to be called when all the chunks and the uh, all the execute batches are completely executed. Execute function batches are completely executed. Okay. So here we can easily track the execution in the Apex jobs. Okay. So, but what happens when we used to call the future method from the batch? So here, as we know that the execute and the finish will going to execute independently and like, so similarly like of the future method. So again, if we try to call a future method from this finish method, then we will going to get an error. And because here this time we cannot track the future method in the apex job and we do not have any idea when this will going to execute and going to complete and the and this finish method is also executing independently so because of this again this will going to refer as a future from a future call and which is again not allowed in the salesforce so, so whenever now if you're going to try a call future method from the batch apex you will going to get an error that's the same error which you will going to get from the future to future call okay so it might be difficult for you to understand, but again, let me know if you have any questions in this. So I will try to again explain you in another video. Okay. So now let's come to the next question. So here the next question is, can we assign more than one role to a single user? So in our Salesforce, we can assign only one role to a single user. And if you try to assign him another role, then the previous role will be remove from him okay so and if you want to so basically why we provide this roles to the different user because of the access to the records and all so if you want to provide more access to the user then you can move to the sharing setting in the sharing rules and there you can add the more permission for this single user but the role can only be one for a one user like of the profile can only be one for a single user okay so so now the next question is is there a way any way to process more than 50 million records in Salesforce. Okay. So as we all know that using the batch apex, we can process the maximum uh, uh, from 50,000 to 50 million records. 
and we can so the number of batches will be created here and we can easily able to process them so the, now the requirement what if i have more than 50 uh, if i want to process more than 50 million records so directly there is a no, no ways there to directly process more than 50000 records but if you have any such requirement so what you can do you can in the finish method you can call a batch apex again okay to process more than uh, to process remaining uh, records uh, rather than from this 50 million but here again you have to put a filter on your query if you do not going to uh, put any filter then the chaining or the recursion will going to happen here it will going to again and again call this all the records and going to execute uh, and going to call execute this execute method again and again so you have to put a checkbox so you have to put some filter here so that you can identify which records have already processed in the first batch and so that when it will going to call next time the batch it should not again call those records what you can do you can create a checkbox and in the first batch for all the records which are processed you can mark this checkbox true and when the second times come you will going to query again so here you can check where the checkbox is false only those records will going to come here and execute or process in this second batch so this is how you can process more than 50 million records but directly there is no way so the next question is when we delete the account it will going to delete all the contact also will it going to delete uh, all the opportunities also okay so uh, if you will going to delete an account and as we know that the account is have the master detail relationship with opportunity but it has a lookup relationship with the contact okay so but when we going but when we going to delete this account then all related contact and opportunity will going to delete it so the opportunity obviously going to delete because there is a master detail relationship so if the parent is not there so the child will also going to get deleted but in case of contact there is a uh, special uh, special relationship they have or the special connection they have what we call as cascade delete so it means this what will happen if we delete the account then the respective context will also going to get deleted here so here if you delete so the answer is yes if you delete an account contact and opportunities will going to get deleted okay and if you're going to undelete the account then again you will going to get all its related contact and the opportunities back or all will uh, automatically going to get undeleted and you will able to see it with the account so the next question is i have two user user one and user two okay user one is up in the role hierarchy and here OWD is private but the user 2 is able to thread on account object how it is possible okay so here you are saying that on the account object user 2 is having the credit permission so credit permission can only be given on the profiles and the permission set and here you also talk about the OWD set as private and user 1 is up in the hierarchy so how it is possible so how it is not possible so my question is this uh, i think uh, your either your question is incomplete or you want to say anything else which i am not getting directly so let me tell you here user one is able to see all the records because it is up in the hierarchy so if you have OWD set as private also, but because of its role hierarchy, it is one is able to see the all the records of user two because of because this is up in the hierarchy. So here it it doesn't matter whether the user two has credit permission on the account object or not. Okay. So let me know if there anything else you want to know in this question. Let me know if you have any other query in this. So now the next question comes is what are cross object formula so all we, uh, so we all know that the formula fields in which we used to give some expression and based on this expression values are calculated and we are able to see this values and these formula fields are the readable fields read only fields okay and one more point that is on these in the database these values are not saved in the database only the expressions which we will going to provide in this formula field are going to be saved in this database okay not the values which are calculated because these values goes on change 
on basis of that whenever we change the expression values which are used uh, whenever we will going to change this expression fields which are used in this expression okay so only the value uh, expressions are saved in this database not the formula field values okay so what are cross object formulas so, so the cross objects formulas are nothing these are only we are getting the field values from the related objects like suppose we have contact and the account and on the contact we have account to look up and i'm going to create one formula here and in this formula we will going to get the value from this lookup field that is from the account field like i want to uh, show the account first name so here the related object is account so from this account we will going to uh, pick up this first name for value so this is when we are going to get the values from the related object or from the lookups then we will going to consider them as or we not going to call them as the cross object formulas okay here we are uh, calculating or creating our expression from the related objects so now the next is can we use bucket fill to hide the pick list value bucket fill so bucket fill we normally used in our salesforce report so this bucket fill will not going to work when we have the condition to hide the pick list value so if you want to hide the pick list value here we have to go to the record types okay so in this record types we get the options to which page layout uh, you want to show this different pick list values so the bucket fills will not going to help you out here so we, we, we can use them over the reports okay so now the next question is what will happen if a user does not have field permission on object if we use with sharing keyword so let me repeat this again what will happen if a user does not have field permission on the object if we use with sharing okay so let's suppose you have a apex class here and here you have used this with sharing keyword okay and in this you have used uh, any object and um and this particular object who will going to run this trigger is not having the access of the fields which we have used in this class okay but as we know that the apex class runs in our system mode by default okay so by default if there is no keyword with sharing or nothing is added with this class then the without any exception the user will successfully able to execute this trigger and this he will not going to get any exception here but what if we use with sharing keyword again again using this also the user will not going to get any exception and he will successfully able to execute this trigger because using this with sharing keyword only the sharing rules are enforced that is the record level access are checked not the field level or the object level permission are checked here so again if as per your question what will happen if a user does not have field permission on the object if we use with sharing so nothing will going to happen the user will successfully able to run all the classes and the app triggers and all because using with sharing it will not going to check for the field permissions okay so if you want to check for the field permission also then you have to go with the schema functions where you will going to check for the field permissions okay then only you the user will not able to going to execute this trigger and apex so these are the few questions which i have discussed with you today again if you have any more questions to share with me you can share over the comment section and we'll discuss with you and if you have any queries do let me know in the uh, do let me know in the comment section and we'll come back in the next video so the next video is also the question answer video so stay tuned we'll meet you soon in the next video till then take care goodbye